why should cities take action on climate change? In the modern era, global temperatures have been rising. You can see from this data from NASA, the temperature anomaly in centigrade over past roughly 100 years. And clearly we have an inexorable increase um, over that time. This temperature increase is being driven by the global warming effect, and that effect is caused by the accumulation of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. This is the famous Keeling curve, and it shows the atmospheric concentration of CO2 in the atmosphere, and this data is gathered at the Mauna Loa Observatory um, in Hawaii. And again, over the last 50 years or so, you can see the steady rise in parts per million of the amount of CO2 that's in our atmosphere. The IPCC in their 2014 report made a number of clear statements about the science of climate change and global warming and about the impacts. Uh, here they say human influence on the climate system is clear and recent anthropogenic emissions of greenhouse gases are the highest in history. Recent climate changes have had widespread impacts on human and natural systems. And it's these impacts we're most interested in taking a look at. The three most important areas of impact that we're expecting from climate change. The first is sea level rise. The second is temperature and precipitation changes. And the third is ocean acidification. We're gonna look primarily at uh, the first two. Another way to show the types of impacts that we're expecting are to look at what are called primary impacts versus associated or associated secondary um, impacts. This table is showing the association of those primary and secondary impacts for sea level rise. As we experience a global sea level rise due to global climate change, there will be a number of secondary effects associated with sea level rise. First and perhaps most obvious is the inundation or long-term change uh, in the water line for coastal communities. So low-lying coastal communities as the seas uh, rise over time will experience a change in their coastline as it moves inland and will experience potential inundation within that coastal zone of, for coastal structures and infrastructure. Extreme high tides will be more dangerous. Coastal erosion uh, will increase and uh, also uh, we expect to see increased saltwater intrusion into coastal aquifers. So coastal communities who are dependent upon uh, groundwater may experience impacts in this way. There are a whole variety of ways in which temperature and precipitation might change and how those interact. And those different kinds of interactions are shown here on the secondary impacts. Just the change in temperature and precipitation regimes over time will of course essentially change the seasonal pattern or nature of the community. This can often be very important, for example, to the agricultural community that may depend upon certain types of growing seasons for certain kinds of crops. Increased temperature on its own will result in increased uh, heat waves. Increased temperature and increased precipitation, or at least change in the way precipitation occurs, could result in more intense and greater rainstorms. When we think about the uh, risk of wildfire combined with uh, increased precipitation, we know that has the potential to trigger more landslides. And then increased temperature and reduced precipitation, which some areas will experience reduced precipitation, could enhance the risk of drought, wildfire, and areas that uh, have snowpack could see a potentially reduced snowpack. One of the challenges of dealing with the science of the impacts of climate change um, is that these impacts will not uh, be equally felt everywhere across the globe. And so though, although we have a lot of good global information about what we can expect on average across uh, the entire planet, um, getting that information down to a national or state or even local level is a bit more challenging. Before we go into that detail, it's important to understand that there will be significant regional variation in these impacts. So for example, here from globalchange.gov, I'm showing several maps that look at the issue of sea level rise and coastal flooding. And for example, you can see that the expected amount of sea level rise under two different scenarios will vary from the Atlantic coast to the Gulf coast to the West coast. And even within those smaller regions, we can see some variation in sea level rise expectations. This is, can be a little bit complicated, but it's primarily due to two factors. Uh, one is the physics of the heating of the ocean. Temperatures will vary um, in the ocean, so there'll be different thermal expansion in different parts of the ocean. And the other is that the tectonic plates that our continent rides on uh, are continually moving, adjusting, 
Certainly where I work in California, we're very aware of that. And so it's actually the land masses in some areas are rising and some areas are falling. And so that changes the relative amount of sea level rise that any community would experience. And then again, given that sea level rise would vary, we certainly know that coastal storms vary. Uh, the southeast United States, for example, is uh, highly prone to hurricanes. And so coastal storms and the variation in coastal storms will further change how communities might experience the impacts of sea level rise and coastal flooding. Another example are temperatures across the United States. This is actually showing uh, temperature change from 1991 to 2012 in the United States. And we can see that on average, uh, the U.S. is experiencing uh, an increase in temperature, but that increase in temperature is uh, different across the country. Uh, the central southeast uh, United States has experienced this less significantly than, for example, the upper Great Plains or the desert southwest. In terms of precipitation and flooding, we're expecting variations here as well. Some areas of the United States are anticipated to experience uh, significant increases in the amount of precipitation. Others will not. And we also know that uh, some regions over the midterm will experience decreased rainfall and over the long term of forecasts are expected to then experience greater rainfall. So even the regional variation will be changing over time for each region as well, adding further uh, complexity. And of course, depending on how this rainfall falls will matter for things like flooding. So if it falls in lots of smaller events, flooding may be less severe. But if we see very intense rainstorms um, increase, that could um, enhance flooding. Ultimately, of course, all of these anticipated effects in the future will depend on the degree to which we continue to put greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. So this is complicated as well in the sense that if we do a great job at reducing greenhouse gas emissions over the, say, the next two decades, the impacts we experience won't be as severe. So part of this is in our own hands. We have some ability to control the ultimate outcome. But it's important to keep in mind that greenhouse gas emissions um, are accumulating in the atmosphere. They are causing climate change now. And we're already experiencing the impacts of climate change. So regardless of what we do with greenhouse gas emissions, we do have work to do here.